So you live in New York, right? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, what do you want me to do? We a couple of months ago, I had the absolute honor to fly to New York and interview the talented photographer, Sissy Liu. And in this interview with Sissy, we covered her creative process, emotion behind photography, and even dive into the topic of street photography and its controversies. And this is the first installment of a new series on this channel where I interview photographers at least once a month. Now this is going to be based off of viewer recommendations, so be sure to comment down below what photographer you want me to interview next. And if by the end of this episode you enjoyed this interview with Sissy, definitely drop a like down below. This lets me know the interest of the type of content that you guys want to see. But enough of that, here are the thoughts and process behind the talented photographer, Sissy Liu. The reason why I only shoot on the uh, on the phone is because I drown my camera. What? What do you mean you drown your camera? <laughs> Shooting back in the day, <laughs> doing weddings, trying okay. to get by, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and was walking, hyping them up, walking behind, like backwards. Didn't realize there's a fountain, oh. and the fountain was like not even tall. Like it was probably right here. So when you walk backward, like your knee bends directly. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. You kind of like wanted to sit down, and I had like two cameras strapped on me. Fell into the fountain. I was shooting slow mo too, oh, and there no. is a footage of me drowning, and you see the leg just like start pointing to the sky. And the bride came and said, yes, I am okay. I was like, I am okay. No, well, she was just really concerned about, like, it's her day. It makes yeah. sense. Right. And I was like, well, I could do the rest of the wedding on film. That's how I started, kind of. I brought, like, three more film cameras for me, for myself. It was in Miami. Yeah. Oh, not in Miami. Somewhere in Florida. But then I was like, well, I just, like, you know, yeah. later on I will do it for myself. So I brought film cameras. Little did I know. Shot the rest of the wedding on film. So that was the start of I your mean, film? I mean, that wasn't like the entire start, but that's what pushed the end. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. Because <laughs> your camera reality. drowned. <laughs> Literally. So, yeah. All right, guys, what is going on, YouTube? Welcome back to another King Jeps episode. So, it's a very special day today. It's the day we interview Sissy for the channel. And honestly, I'm a little bit awkward myself. So you're gonna have to do a lot of talking, Susan. Oh my gosh, same. So we just be awkward <laughs> to get there. Uh, there's a lot of firsts for us. So this is our first time in this studio. This is Orchid House Studio. And uh, it's in Williamsburg, right? Mm -hmm. East Williamsburg. East Bush Williamsburg. Williamsburg. But it's a gorgeous studio, you guys. And I just want to shout them out really quick and just, you know, give them a huge shout out and thank you because they let us use their space. And uh, it's amazing. Have you been here before? No, well, not in this one, no. Not in this one here? It looks great. It looks great, the right? The light is beautiful. I don't know if you can... I don't know how wide your lens is. Yeah. But there's some light pouring in right oh, next yeah. to me. And as a photographer, I who shoots film is like... That's all we do. <laughs> We're like all gravitated towards <laughs> that. See the light, you're like, Ooh. So it's our first time in the studio, but it's also the first time I'm doing an interview styled video. So uh, with that... Well, it's only up from here. <laughs> yeah. On the back of this granola box, that they kindly provided us. Uh, I wrote down some questions because we're using my phone to uh, film some, some like a, a B camera. So yeah. I'm gonna try to hide it, but I'm just letting you guys know that it's there if you guys are wondering. That. It's great. <laughs> it's, it's the vibe today. So, okay, so really quick, Sissy, mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about yourself. So for a lot of the viewers on the channel, um, I think the only time 
you've been on was from the Chicago video. Well, I've been in the audience yeah. for the longest time. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> so now I get to kind of be on the video itself. It's kind of, it's crazy. It's oh, an honor. Thank you. It's an honor to have you. Well, thank you. Now, <laughs> this is the awkward part. Thank yeah, you. this is the awkward part. <laughs> A um, little bit about myself. It's such a weird question to answer for yourself. Yeah. Uh, well, start with my name. My name is Sissy Lu. Um, originally from China, came to the state uh, to study music, actually. Music? Classical music. What? Yeah. I didn't know that. Uh, not many people do. <laughs> for the, inter in the interview. <laughs> Exclusive. <laughs> no, uh, so yeah, I came here to study for college and then in college, I was lucky enough to expose myself into the world of art, not just um, musical art, but also visual art. Mm -hmm. And a huge part of why I pick up a camera is because I didn't think anyone took a nice photo of me good enough for my recital posters. Maybe not good enough, it just, I have a vision. Yeah. I didn't think I do until I see what other people, you know, created. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I want to be different. And I keep asking, no one can really do exactly what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. um, kind of bought a camera, like super, start with a Fuji actually, first Fuji mirrorless. XE1. Oh, dang. With a uh, Nifty 50, 1.8 <laughs> at the time. I think the whole like setup cost me less than $150. Good deal. And <laughs> started from there. And then first time I realized, oh, actually, I might be able to do something with this was, oh my gosh, I'm like diving into it. Sorry. Keep going. We love it. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, someone like actually asked if I would do like an engagement photo. I was like, mm -hmm. people paying me for this? They were like, how much you charge? I have no sense of currency. I was like, $50? Wow. <laughs> deal of, that's, that's a better deal than the camera. If you get Sissy Lou for 50 oh, bucks, yeah. no way. <laughs> but I was like, okay, wait, actually that could earn money. Yeah. And then 50 in college, and so when I first came here, I was like, that's so much money. <laughs> um, so then I was like, why not just add it into my major? So I graduated with two degrees. Uh, music performance and visual arts in photography and ceramics mm. so it kind of started from there yeah. started film kind of like at we were, we were saying about um, me falling back into a fountain <laughs> <laughs> so unfortunately drowned the camera the digital cameras I have mm. and from there I kind of was forced into only shooting film mm. and then I was forced during pandemic to really put myself out there, kind of was getting bored sharing my work online. Never thought it was good enough. Um, who knew just by being vulnerable and being true to myself was able to relate to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and here I am getting to talk to Jonathan. You know what? It's, I promise you guys, this is the <laughs> complete opposite. I'm here with Sissy today and that's, that's, that's amazing. So I first saw your content, I think, a little bit after, like when we were moving more towards where we are now during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know, it was so cool to see your style and just what you, just your approach to photography. Mm -hmm. By the way, which instrument? is? Was there a particular or was it? Uh, so my concentration was in vocal opera and <gasps> piano. <laughs> vocal opera? If, if at the end of this is a life. good interview, can we do like a little? Past ah. life. <laughs> Like, I studied music for so long, mm. and it was such an identity back then, and now it feels so weird that it was me. Mm. I don't know if you, like, yeah. like, do something when you're a kid, and now, like, that's completely not you. No, for sure. Yeah, you feel so strange that they once in the past, that mm. was you at some point, and you really, like, dive into it, and that's whatever I know you about, you know? Yeah. Kind of crazy. That, so to tie back into your photography though, mm -hmm. can you share a little bit about like your style? Um, what, like what are some of the content that you post? And you post mostly on Instagram and YouTube, right? I wish I post more on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> you know, someone in Chicago told me, he's like, well, I hope to see your um, new video on YouTube in 15 years. I was like, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, it's a lot of work. I mm -hmm. applause to whoever create content on YouTube consistently. Um, it's crazy. Like, mm. what do you do with all the footage? <laughs> it's so much work, and 
people are taking that platform so seriously. Yeah. Like they want the outpour of really great content that stands out. Yeah. And that pressure, it's kind of crazy. Like, are you a perfectionist? Yeah. Sort of. For the most part. <laughs> I just feel like you, you won't put anything out if you don't feel the best, right? Like. Yeah, most so, definitely. And then for a long, like a long form content, like 20 to 40 minutes, mm. like there's so much work. Oh like, yeah. Looking through it just to review, just to edit, like takes days, weeks. So that's why I do short form. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So yeah, no, you do a lot of short form content. There. Yeah. Are you on, you're on TikTok too, right? I am sort of on TikTok. Sort of on TikTok. Yeah. So is mo is Instagram mostly where everyone finds you, or like how does that um, work? Well, Instagram is where I post most consistently. Okay. And most in be in touch with whoever might follow me there. Mm -hmm. uh, TikTok is where I think things kind of go crazy. Yeah. Uh, people start to find me there mm -hmm. kind of thing. Like this whole online space just has weird words that I don't yeah. love to use, but there is a better chance of going, I guess, quote unquote viral, viral there yes. on TikTok. But it's because how the algorithm was able to pair people who might be interested in your contents there. Yeah. So there are more new people finding me on TikTok, but I'm most consistent. Instagram feels like where my community is at. Yeah, for sure. Like, what's your style? Like, wh can you tell us a little bit more about you what you that do? You asked that No, 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 it's all good, it's all good. <laughs> um, my style, so see, this is another hard question to ask, because mm. I feel like we're always evolving and we're always learning new things and trying to incorporate them into our style, quote unquote. Mm. Um, I start to realize I always have had a style, even looking back all the way I recently found like a little folder of my Nokia phone, <laughs> <laughs> like back when, um, like middle school, I think. And I had some photo. And then back in the day, you had like 512 megabyte or something, or oh kilobyte. You know, like yeah. so small. It's tiny. And you have to delete photos. So there's a few photos that it deemed to be worthy for me to save it mm. all this time. And I was looking at them, I was like, wow. There are so much parallel I still draw from those what I see back in the day. Mm. So I would describe my style by just kind of discovering and looking back at the archives that I created all this year. It's more, I love colors. Okay. I love, uh, I think I, a lot of people who shoot film, a lot of them shoot black and white and they have an eye for texture, for lines, for like the black and white eyes. I don't see myself doing that. I have to do it very consciously. Mm. I see colors in a way maybe black and white photographer do is that color draw my attention. Like when I see a scene, I see the colors kind of creating a mood uh, that how they tie into together, how they might be balancing out the photo, the frame and mm. all that. So I would describe kind of I almost pour my emotions into the way I see, mm -hmm. whether that be color, the composition, the the scene itself. So, yeah, I, I would actually rather other people to describe what my mm. style is than yeah. me to do it myself, because I don't want to box myself in. No, exactly. And I enjoy showing people what I see, and I think that's what you do as well. Yeah. I'm not as good as you. No, you, you like you show people what you see, and that's most important. Yeah. Yeah. When I mention style, though, sometimes I feel like a lot of people will generalize their type of photography as like a label. So, mm. I, I think I box myself in and say like I shoot mostly street photography. Mm -hmm. um, how do you feel about using, you know, that word like street photography, and does that relate to you in any way? Because most of the time you are photographing out the towards the street, right? I mean, how do you describe street photography? Or like, how do you describe, describe any type of photography? Street photography for me is a study of life. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? It's just like social documentary, but... Can, it, well, I'm gonna try to be like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. bouncing back the question, then can you study life even indoor then? Absolutely. So why, why is only exclusively street photography? It's street photography. I think it, I'm not sure where I think because a lot of people, when you, they hear that word, it mm -hmm. brings a certain, um, you know, preconceived 
idea of mm -hmm. the type of photography that's done. And how do you see that? Like, wh mm -hmm. what is that style? What is that preconceived? Honestly, it's, I, it's hard to explain, mm -hmm. like you said, because street photography can be done indoors, it can be done outside. It's just a label they put over it that's, I don't know. Like you said, it boxes, it kind of boxes you in, right? Yeah. Well, I think really when, if you think all the way into the history of photography, and I'm not someone who know that very well, mm. but it's not been a very, the history of photography is still so short, right? A hundred plus years. Yeah. And to think that the people who started doing what is conceived now, street photography, do you think they were conscious of making that, the street photography? No. Right? So yeah. it's kind of a term that we start to kind of put together once we see more people doing it the same way that they did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Make a beat out of it. <laughs> if anything, I, I know what you mean by there is a pre preconceived image of how the street photography nowadays look like? Mm -hmm. Is that fast paced? Is that some might be wider angle and that like a moment into someone's life in quick passing? Like mm -hmm. that, I, I know what you mean, but I th also think there's so many possibility that it's left to explore in street photography. Mm. And just to call that one style street photography, just like calling things portrait photography, there's so many ways to do it, to studio, do like lighting, all that is kind of uh, sending a message, especially to the people who might come after us to kind of say, this is the only way to do it. Yeah. And that's not true. Like we're still developing so much more technique in photography. For sure. And even though we're back in film now, there's still so many <laughs> things that we can explore and experiment. So um, I, Someone like told me like if the if the photo is taken on the street and it's street photography, and yeah, I mean, I think it's left for everyone to define that. For sure. And don't let people <clears throat> don't let people tell you what that specific type of photography is. So then you only know what that means. Yeah. Kind of like create your thing, create your own thing, like. Yeah, I think there define there might be new term that comes out in the next few years. Yeah. I mean, who knew about the was it the first boom of like 2014 Instagram photography of like leg dangling off the building? Oh that my was gosh. New, yeah. And now it's not anymore. It's and then, not. So there are more <laughs> things. <laughs> and it's funny you mentioned. I think a lot of uh, great photographers they don't like the term street photography. Maybe for the same reasons that you put out. Well, I cannot be compared to that. <laughs> That's not the same, but I know what you mean. <laughs> you know what it's I mean? Just, it's way too high of a praise to be putting next to the great photographers. Well, a lot of people look up to you in that light. And I think, um, myself included for sure, we see so much of your photos and, you know, there's a reason why people get attached to it. So you live in New York, right? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, what do you want me to do? We can't, okay, we just came back from a pause. <laughs> I had to, because, okay, when I film my videos, that's usually how it is. I'm like, da 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 da. Okay, welcome no, back. I so. get it. It was really funny. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have laughed. It's like the commercial break. We had teleprompters everywhere, guys. It's just ready to go. No, um, I'll, I'll put myself together. Do you yeah. live in New York, Sissy? Uh, yes, I know I do. Yes. Yeah, okay. We moved so, here like six years ago. Six years ago? Mm hmm. So in any way, has New York ever influenced your photography? Of course, influenced everything. Yeah. And I remember being naive and tell my friend like, please let me know if New York influenced me. And then yeah, mm. like quickly it did. <laughs> um, no, New York is, you will see, this is your what, second day here now? Second day, yeah. First full day? First full day, yes. Well, you will see, walking around, just take the city in. Um, the city is, it's hard to really see the good thing in it mm -hmm. until you open to it. Mm -hmm. It's oh, it's kind of like the. Have you heard of like the Paris syndrome? No, I haven't. Like so, people like have such a dream and hope when they visit Paris because it has like that that layers of 
the, you know, all that romantic feeling. And when they got there, they're so disappointed mm. and they see the city as itself. Um, New York is similar. Like, it's, if you look at it, it's dirty. It's, <laughs> it's like, Chicago is so clean. It's <laughs> like, <laughs> this in comparison, we're like, ugh. But what is so cool about this place is when you're really open to it, when you're like nonchalant about it, mm -hmm. this city opens itself to you mm -hmm. and you're going to see so many inspiration. Like it's a city really truly for possibilities. Mm -hmm. Like people, one thing I love about here, right? Like people love how different you are here. Mm -hmm. And it's not just for like, I don't know, it's not weird. It's, they appreciate the difference in you rather than you trying to blend in. I think I spent, when I first moved to the U.S., spent the most of my time trying to blend in. Yeah. And I, I think I did an okay job, but it's ultimately not me. Oh, I and you. being here, you just kind of open your wings and then... <laughs> yeah, it's, it's great. I love New York. And it definitely influenced me in the, photo, in the way that I photograph. And I think, again, it's back to that anything is possible. Like, asking people on the on the street is possible uh, holding this camera everywhere i go is possible oh, yeah. um you might get robbed it's possible <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's everything and it's also a place where i realized that i might want to share my work online because for the longest time i never felt comfortable so and you started photography in new york right in the states of New York, not in the, in the city. No. Right, right, right. Do you have days where you plan to go out and shoot? Mm. Or is it more like when you feel like it, you grab your camera and you go out? Or right. are you like always having your camera on? Like, how does that work for you? Right. Um, I mean, I start to kind of try to find a system like how I do this too. Mm. Um, structure. Structure, there, there it is. Go. Bingo. This is the right way. <laughs> That's yes. how I was like, this. Yes, now I see it. Yeah. <laughs> the structure, um, I'm sort of a free spirit. I do not like to tell what to do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I started doing that during pandemic. Mm. Um, I was, you know, jobless and all that. and. It's great to be jobless at the time. Mm. I don't know if you relate to it, but everyone was jobless. <laughs> so you don't feel like you're like... It's just part of the norm, right? right? Yeah. And then like everyone's free, everyone's on walk for photo shoot. <laughs> like everyone's on the street and that's the year where I really like walked every single corner, corners mm. in the city. So, but yeah, I think that created a hobby of me like to be on the street, just as my heart, like there's never an agenda. Mm. Like I just go out and see where the light is and just keep following and you're like, oh, that's not a great neighborhood. I should walk back. <laughs> and, or that looked great, that's going more. And yeah, I think I'm quite blessed now that through a lot of people and brand my trust in me and the way I do my things, they support me. So I'm able to kind of do freelance. Yes. and like being online right so there's not an everyday thing that i have to do yeah i still have to respond to email which i hate chat gpt helps me so much <laughs> oh my god <gosh>. <laughs> i'm like i hate emails i wish like i wish i could just really take photo all day long and then you know do yeah. all the logistics like someone else do it but yeah i mean walk out i Today I might co want coffee. Every day I want boba. So like there are like boba <laughs> spots around. I'll be like, you know, today's go is when I walk to uh, Lower East Side, I'll get that boba that I like. Mm. Or today I'm feeling matcha. Today I'm feeling fruit, <laughs> you know? There's structure, but it's not directly like for photography. It's just if it happens, it's gonna happen. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like I think taking photo is almost secondary. Mm to how I want to live. Yeah. Even though this is what I do now, yeah. still it's not what I seek for. Gotcha. Um, yeah, I had, when this whole online thing start becoming more major and like taking up most of my time, there had been a 10 months period that I stopped doing all together. I don't know if, if people can tell, but I was reusing a lot of my, the thing I already recorded. It was because I felt like I was seeking for content mm. and that 
didn't make me feel very good. Okay. Like, so I would rather it to happen naturally. It happen naturally. Yeah. I think a lot of people don't look into that aspect of content creation too. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot that you do online and uh, not all the time are you going to feel up and good to do it no. and whatnot, you know? We're human. We're human. And quite frankly, you have to kind of treat this as almost a corporate job, right? Yeah. Like, now this is a full time. You have to treat it seriously. Yeah. And that also means doing it when you don't even feel like doing it. Doing it when clients chasing back in your back and ask, demanding for you think your things when there might be a lot of things that happen in your life that you know you might not be able to complete. So yeah, there I, I needed that ten months to separate that brain to know that yes, this is my job now, and yes, I still have passion. And how do I have them coexist? That's beautiful. Yeah. And you found that balance, you feel? I don't find that balance <laughs> yet, but it's it seems still like a you journey. do. Like I, I, I try to stand up for myself a little more yeah. and try to just understand that's the logic, and that helps a little bit. Because sometimes, you just, you know, sometimes yeah. some days are really hard. You're doing a great job, seriously, Thank you. you okay? Yeah. No matter what, you're doing awesome. No, I, I'm <laughs> glad that putting myself out there raw is. People actually see it rather than criticizing it. And it's scary, but oh yeah, I'm glad that some people relate to it. Oh, yeah. for sure. Yeah. It's scary to put everything out. Of course. And be vulnerable about everything. Yeah. You know, are there things that you're more drawn to that you'll, you'll you know, most likely photograph? Is there anything that you notice like pattern-wise or? Is it a trick question? Because duh. <laughs> <laughs> well, more so like, yeah, look, I want to know. I'm curious. Right. Uh, for me, myself, that this ongoing project of photographing older people mm. has always been in my mind even before I picked up my Hasselblad. Mm. But it was a combination of childhood, childhood experience and cultural backgrounds and all that made me realize that um, growing old is never really, really to be ashamed of. My parents were older when they had me mm. as their first and only child. And growing up, they people think they're my grandparents and they always try to dye their hair to make me feel better about mm. having them around. And I don't know, I, I don't think that's how it should be. I think being older should be praised. and. Regardless what they do in their life, um, being older still means that they walk on this earth more than that, like longer than that we did, and there are things good or bad that we can learn from them. Yeah. So just to dismiss that whole community is really heartbreaking for me, um, and I think documentary photography has such a narrative, <clears throat> and you can. You can hold such a narrative to showing people your opinion mm -hmm. without using words. Um, and simply by photographing older people in a really sweet and respectful way to make people realize that they are beautiful. Mm -hmm. And there is nothing to be ashamed of being older. Yeah. It's the way I want to really try to create space in Ever than my work, um, yeah. I think I don't know if you recall that. If you first think about like older people on in photograph, it's that kind of really the texture slide all the way and like show their wrinkles yeah. and show how tough their life must must have been up on this point. Yes. I just think there's more grace in there than the tough show, like. Yeah, and I wanted to show that through the photograph, and that's if people who might not read the language and might not listen to the interview I did still will be able to take that photo as a universal way to get to know someone, you know? Yeah. So that's why I shoot a lot of older people, and I don't want people to think, even the older people I meet on the street, I'm not approaching you because you're old and no, yeah, works like that. For sure. There is a sense of connection. Yeah. There is a sense of like 
the thing like I think you also feel that being on the street all the time sometimes they're just like a, the thing that you draw you into the yeah. scene like aura or something yeah. sometimes yeah and then some people don't have that and I mm -hmm. think when I when I see that person whether it's across the street whether it's across the room I, I it still gets me so nervous trying to go up to them like don't let the online thing fool you. I still get so nervous. I, there's <laughs> not in my stomach. <laughs> it, it's crazy, but then I know that there's something there, and I wanted to. I wanted to open that story. Yeah. And sometimes I can see people even like want to talk, but they just feel ashamed. It almost. I don't know if that's the right word, but yeah. To open up. Just a little bit of a show. Yeah. yeah, and then once they do, once they realize that you allow them to have a space to do that, their whole face lit up, their whole like, it's yeah. just so happy and I love, love to see that. And that's beautiful, it shows a lot in your videos, like, uh, I think she was wearing a hat, and I don't know what park that was in, but it, it looked like there was a park there. Mm -hmm. um, it's gorgeous, I love what you're doing with this. I didn't even know that was a project of yours till now though. Yeah. And that's amazing. I don't know what to do with the project. It's just yeah. something that I have in mind. Um, we'll do you see. want to do a book out of it, or are you going to think of uh, publishing it any, anywhere? Um, since most of them are pretty online, I don't know if having a book would be the best way for people to spend their money on. Mm. Um, I do want to revisit a lot of older pictures that I started the project with and reprint them. And I don't know. I don't know just yet. Um, yeah. I, I hesitate to say this, so I don't know if you want this part, but mm -hmm. we'll see. We can leave it out if you, you know, if anything too. No, so I haven't really told anyone this past weekend by my grandma that I'm closer to passed away in China. I'm and sorry. the whole weekend I was trying to, all my friends like, let us be there for you and I just wanted to be alone. Um, it's hard to be in the position doing that, this whole thing, the project, you might say, but I still feel like a hypocrite not to be able to do that, do that for my own family. Yeah. And yeah, so I always thought that I would have some sort of exhibit that exists near them and, or, them being on the book cover and that they could come and see it. Yeah. And I don't think it's possible. Um, we have tissues. Yeah. Taking that drawer. No, it's okay. Okay. it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. That's where our hands are for. <laughs> no. So, yeah, it's. I don't know. I. I'm seeing so many people's grandparents in my photograph and to know that I might not have the chance to have my own there, I don't know. I, hear I don't know what to do with it yet. And I'm still processing, it's been quite raw and new. You're okay? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. I'm good at hiding it. Well, I don't know if I'm okay, that's the reason. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'm so sorry to see for your loss. This afternoon, I agreed to do it a while back and I t I'd taken some time to like try to think how I can get through it. Yeah. Not to get through it, but you know, just to just still yeah. emotionally and physically being there. Um, and like, I know a lot of people are going to be there and like really there to support and also to have conversation and all that. And. I don't know how exactly to do it, so I was trying to put my emotion into paper during the weekend, and so I came up with a theme, and while talking to my parents and all that, we're going to try to photograph the sense of far and near. Say it again? Far and near. Far and near, okay. Like, being away from family, yeah. and just the sense of like all that you know it's it's such intricate thing to navigate and like i said like a lot of i like to see the photo when people pour their 
vision and emotion into in their stories. So that's kind of a concept that I, I thought about that I might bring up before the walk, trying to have people the sense of like whether far and near with foreground background, the far and near of emotion, of togetherness and separations, the far and near from far as being in the past and near as the present, all that. Yeah. So that's beautiful. Hopefully I love that. that could help people generate some of their story into it, you know? Yeah. I wanted to do something for my grandma for that way. <laughs> Let me let me ask a very lighthearted question. Yeah, then, please do. Kind of yes. <laughs> let's let's wrap this up here. What's soon. my favorite boba? I'm just kidding. Oh yeah, let's do. <laughs> what's your favorite boba? And then um, you know you do shoot a lot with the Pentax 110 that you have. Mm -hmm. You have your ha uh, Hasselblad here. My baby. Uh, what gear do you mostly shoot with these days? Like you know, do you gravitate towards one thing or is it just? Yeah. You know what's funny? I. Wait, what's your favorite boba? You my favorite boba. Time. Depends on the day. It's the same answer as the camera. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Depends on the day. It depends gotcha. on the mood. Uh, yeah, I mean, sunny day like today might be something fruity. Mm. Uh, have you had cheese foam? Mm -mm. Oh my gosh. Okay, That's I need good. to bring all of you. <laughs> yeah, he knows. Uh, yeah, we need to like go get a boba hunt. Yeah. Fruit tea with cheese foam is like something for all summer. I love. That sounds good. It's amazing. It's like a cheesecake, but like <laughs> can't drink. Um, tiger sugar, come on. Stable, yeah, there you stable. go. Yeah, all that. I love all, all of them. But um, camera is the same way. Depends on the day. I own a little too many cameras. <laughs> I think I have like more than twenty. Let's go. That's how it should be. <laughs> Those are your tools, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, but the thing is, they they're not like. I started to collect cameras, actually, cheaper one, like, uh, on my road trip and, like, anything. I give cameras away uh, sometimes when I recently met, like, a group, a father and daughter group in the West Village in my coffee shop. And then they were, like, traveling and they were asking a lot of questions, like, where to go and all that. I was like, do you guys bring a camera? Because, like... It's like the girl's first time and dad is kind of like bringing them here to see his past life kind of thing. I'm like, uh, do you have a camera to like document? They're like, we did it and we have our phones. So I like run upstairs, like gave them one of my point of shoes. So like, I love oh, that's having so my camera to be used by people, you know? So uh, the few that I do use really depends. I hustle blood. It's, it's a little formal, it's a little heavy, so I don't bring out every single day. Mm -hmm. But some days, when I want to take things slow, I take this camera. Um, love a good point and shoe. I love Minox. The have, Minox? You, have you had the Minox? The little flip out thing? Yeah, flip yeah. out thing. And it's zone focus, so oh, it's yeah. my sense of being like a Leica photographer. <laughs> I try to zone focus with it, I try to be like, Put a little red dots on there, be like, mm. oh, like a photographer. I can do it too. I'm sorry, all jokes aside. <laughs> no, that one's like a quick, small, lightweight camera that I put in a bag. Mm -hmm. Pentax Auto Anton, everyone know about it, you've seen it. Yeah. It's, I love it just because, you know, I just actually, I'm gonna show you something. Yeah, I yeah. just received a road that I really didn't think is gonna come out. Okay. And maybe it's just, something with that camera and I just go so well together. Mm -hmm. That row came out better than oh. I expected. And Oh, this is on that 110? Yeah. So oh. like, I didn't wow. think, I had That's no cool. expectation because you can see like the shutter speed was super low. Yeah. And I can send those to you if you wanted to show that. Like, the shutter speed is so low and I was like trying to maneuver and then he's being so nice in the park right after the sun sets. I was like, I don't know if the, any of those going to come out. If you don't hear from me, they didn't come out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I was so glad like that camera and I just had that kind of special, like we function on the same wavelength. Mm -hmm. If you think of camera as like a person, we just, <laughs> we go together so well. Uh, I don't know, Nikon F3 is the camera I would never really, this one and Nikon F3 would never sell. Mm. That one is very special to me. It came to me, as many of my camera do, and I picked it up in Pakistan, and it was a really special story too. Mm. And it was left there by a journalist, 
um, it would just it will forever be there for me. Oh, so that's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> every camera depends on the day. Camera and boba pairs together really well. So. <laughs> Are you yeah. gonna go against Juan and do camera and boba like he does beers Why and cameras? Why not? Why not for the for the girlies, for the, for the ones? I think people would actually go to that. I would for sure. Yeah, I mean, I love boba. <laughs> boba is so good. I want everyone to know that. <laughs> okay, on. guys, we gotta wrap this up soon. I think we're a little bit over, but um, I'm not. I hope there's nobody waiting outside the door. <laughs> no, they're fine. They'll be alright. <laughs> we have the sissy. Lou here today. Um, really quick, where can everybody find you on your socials? Yeah, so almost everywhere I go by Sissy underscore Lou, spelled S I S S or this way S I S S I <laughs> underscore L U. Uh, good luck keyframing that in. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, and on YouTube, it's on the develop. It's yes. actually um, spelled so hip way. I don't know why we did that. <laughs> <laughs> it was a group effort uh, during the pandemic, you know, we all, uh, it's under U-N-D-E-R, develop, spell D-V-L-P. See, I can't even say that, develop, yeah, D-V-L-P. D-V-L-P. With all the vowels. So, yeah, you can find me anywhere, <laughs> or you can just, like, DM him and be like, hey, where can I find this? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to respond to every single one of exactly them, guys. every single one. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for being on this. Thank you are you. the first episode. Uh, you're someone I personally look up to, and despite everything, you know, behind the scenes and in front of the camera, mm -hmm. uh, thank you're amazing you. as a photographer and just as a person too. So thank, thank you. Thank so you for much. having me. And of course. yeah, and I'm, I hope I was able to give some valuable input. <laughs> a lot of people and didn't really. Yeah. No, thank you for allowing me to say a lot of things here. Let's go. Hey. All right, guys. <laughs> Deuces. Can we get a thumbnail? <laughs> thumbnail? Okay, great. So this is the... How do you want? I don't know how this is going to work. I don't know either. I'm trying to have the camera in. This is my baby. This is awkward though. Okay. Or do you want something like more... Oh, okay. So <laughs> okay. I don't know how to make the faces. You just made a bunch of thumbnails. Yeah. yeah? Just go through. Okay, great.